Goodwill is a wish for happiness. When you're getting started with goodwill practice, it's good to start with some happiness you have for yourself. This is one of the reasons why John Lee recommends working with the breath to gain a sense of well-being. And then you can dedicate that well-being to others. You're happy to share. He says it's like having a water tank. If there's no water in the tank, you open up the faucet and some air comes out. The air may be cooling, but it's not nearly as cooling as if there were water coming out. So it's good to have some happiness inside, some well-being inside. So learn how to relate to the breath in a way that allows a sense of well-being to grow. Don't squeeze it. Don't push it. Just give it space to develop and to grow on its own. And then you can tap into that. That'll be the water that comes out of the faucet. But you have to remember, goodwill is supposed to be universal if you're doing it right. Which means you have to develop thoughts of goodwill at times when you're not feeling happy, too. If the breath is uncomfortable, the body is uncomfortable, that's no time to have ill will. Or thoughts of being put upon. Think of that image the Buddha has of the person being sawn into pieces. I have a group of bandits. He said, even if, if that were you, having your limbs sawn off by these bandits have pinned you down, and if you had ill will for them, you would not be following the Buddhist teachings. Even for them, especially for them, you have to have goodwill. Because if you die, you don't want to have your mind fixated on them. He says, you start with them, and then you spread thoughts of goodwill to the whole universe. Which means that you have to learn how to generate goodwill, even when you're not feeling especially happy or not, there's not any, any great pleasure inside. This means you have to reason with yourself. Ask yourself, what do you get out of ill will? And there will be a part of the mind that likes to feed on ill will, likes to feed on anger likes to get worked up, resentful. But you have to ask yourself, what kind of food is that? What kind of nourishment is it for the mind? It's like the kind of food that tastes good, but it's going to be bad for your intestines. You have to realize it's for your own good that you think thoughts of goodwill. And this is also why the Buddha adds to the Brahma Viharas not only goodwill, but also compassion and empathetic joy. Compassion is for when you see someone else suffering and you realize you're not suffering with them. You may actually be in a position of power above them, but you're not going to abuse your power. And that's for empathetic joy. Of the Brahma Viharas, that's the one that gets glossed over the most. But it's actually a really noble application of goodwill. In other words, you see people who are happy, who have wealth, who have good fortune, that you don't have at the moment. And you make up your mind you're not going to be jealous, you're not going to be resentful, you're not going to be envious. May they continue in their good fortune, may they continue in their happiness. 
In other words, at that point, you're not thinking about what me, 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 me. You're putting your immediate desire for that kind of happiness off to the side. Here it's useful to remember, as the Buddha said, you see someone else who's very wealthy, has lots of power, lots of beauty, lots of popularity. Remind yourself, you've been there too. In this long, long time. It's the same as when he says, you see somebody who's really, really poor, a leper by the side of the road. You've been there as well. When you think of that, it helps to make sure that your compassion is not tinged with a sense of superiority, that you're not looking down on the other person. But as for remembering, you may not be able to remember, but just think of the general principle. You've been in all kinds of happiness, experienced all kinds of happiness, and it's gone. If it were really good, it would have stayed with you. So there's no reason to be resentful, no reason to be envious. And if you want to have a thought of me in there, just remind yourself that wishing other people happiness that you don't have is a noble thing. It shows a real generosity of character, generosity of heart. Otherwise, you're going to allow people to have happiness only up to your level, at best. What kind of attitude is that? It's very narrow. And if you're envious of people who are happy, that means that when the time comes for you to be happy, have good fortune, you're going to be people envious of you. Do you want that? No. So broaden your mind. Make sure that in your practice of goodwill that you include space for empathetic joy. And that way the practice becomes ennobling. And ennobling you, it makes the mind much broader. And a better position to settle down and say, each of us has our own happiness. There's no reason to be jealous, no reason to be envious. But I've got my work to do. The potentials for happiness are here inside. Just make sure you give yourself the time and the space and develop the skills to make the most of them. <laughs>